The following tutorial will show you how to add an IP camera to the Blue Iris software package. Top left hand corner we have a little camera icon. and We will click on that, open it up, and you'll see in here we have a video tab. Under the video tab we'll select network IP camera and we'll go to the configuration tab. In the configuration tab you need to select the type of camera that you have from the extensive list. Then in, install your host name or your IP address along with the particular web port that your IP camera is using and then your RTSP port as well. Make sure you put in an ID and a password if your camera came defaulted with no IP with no password or ID I recommend that you put one in it. Once you've done that, you can hit OK. Mine's done, so I'm going to hit Cancel. And then you're going to come down here and you're going to select the image format. Make sure that this matches what your camera is currently set at. And your frame rate, I typically try to make this match what my camera is. If you set your camera at 7 frames, try to set this at 7 frames. De-interlace is not required for the IP camera, so I would leave that alone. And then text or graphic overlays. This is if you just want to put a name or something on the camera, you can do that. I recommend that you don't, um, and I can get into that later, but it has to do with how you write files to the hard disk. I recommend that you don't add anything to it. That way we can be able to write the camera directly to disk, and it uses the, the fewest amount of system resources allowing you to add more cameras. Motion sensitivity. If you can see here uh, we have minimum object size. This just determines how big the event has to be before we consider it to be motion. And then you have the contrast which is how big of a difference in color do we want to register as a motion event. And then the time, how long that event has to occur and your masking is located here and you can just kind of highlight the things that you don't want to see. You just left click and drag and you can draw the pictures and color things in and so forth. Pretty simple. If you want to erase something just hold down your control key and you can erase what you've done. Now in the event that you have a particular area that's extremely sensitive and you want to make sure that you get everything in this area, you can add what's known as a hotspot. And you can say to the software by drawing this red box that anything that takes place in this box you want to record and you're looking for the highest level of sensitivity. Again, to get rid of that, just hold down your control, left click and it goes away. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel because mine was already set up the way I wanted it. And then when we come into here you can select your profile. I'll go into profiles in another uh, tutorial. There's a little bit there to be done. Um, video when it's triggered create an alert folder when the image is triggered. You pretty much see how mine is set up. It works really well. File name. I would not change this file name. You have the ability to do so, but I do not recommend it as the software is set up to be able to read this file name in the process of populating all of your clips for a particular day so you can find video. So I'm going to recommend that you just leave this alone. Pre-triggered frame buffer size. Um, this is going to come back to how many cameras you happen to have on the system. If you're going to have a, a pretty simple NVR that doesn't have a lot of system resources, you probably don't want to do a whole lot to the buffer size. Um, if you've only got two or three cameras and you want all kinds, you can just turn it right up. It won't bother anything. But this is how you will uh, adjust some of the throughput on the system. Combine or cut each at one hour. You can set this at 24 hours, 4 hours. All it means is 
you know, in an, in an event where video is recording and you've got a lot of activity, how long do you want it to go before it says, okay, this file's big enough, let's go to the next file. And these are your files and or clips over here. So I've got mine set not to go over one hour. So that means if it picks up video at 8.02, at 9 o'clock, it's going to create a new file. If it picks up video at 10.46, at 11, it's going to start a new file. It starts the new files at the top of the hour. If you do four hours, it'll be the top of the fourth hour coming up. And that's how you would set up your recording, your motion triggers, and install your video IP camera.